It's time for our second hot topic. I want to take a look at uh, the new scramble for Africa's resources and the ramifications of African debt. Even as uh, Vice President Kashim Shatima, accompanied by the Minister of Agriculture, Abubakar Kiari, the Minister of Innovation, Science and Technology, Uche Nnaji, amongst others, uh, who are presently representing the country at the G77 summit in Cuba. The summit is holding between, well, from today, 15th to 17th of this month, and will deliberate on development issues facing members, mainly from the global south. Obviously, the VP will be continuing the FDI drive of this administration on this trip. We've been joined this morning to take a look at this by Joe Femi Daguro, Public Policy Analyst. Good morning to you, Mr. Daguro. Good morning to you. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you loud and clear. Okay, so the Vice President has gone to Cuba to represent the country. Um, what are we looking at here? What do you think are the takeaways that we may be seeing coming from this trip? Well, you see, I think it's a continuation of the chief salesman's uh, approach and job that uh, the president has uh, started. You know, it's a good thing that uh, the presence of Nigeria is now being felt uh, globally, let me put it that way, in a positive way. Uh, because if we don't have a presence in all these associations and uh, meeting those people and giving them that same assurance that uh, we can do business with them uh, and they should be able to do business with us uh, following the best uh, global practice as well. I think it's, it's a good job to go around and, and uh, reestablish, let me put it that way, um, our you know, relationship, our contacts, our networks so that in the next few years we begin to see uh, the dividends of uh, these trips uh, good enough uh, we are seeing it gradually we are seeing uh, we are hearing uh, a lot of promises we are hearing a lot of uh, discussions going on here and there but i think uh, in the next few months and a few years we should be able to see uh, the concrete uh, result in terms of uh, dollars and uh, pounds and naira investment in, in Nigeria. That is what uh, most Nigerians would like to see. It's good uh, seeing them going here and there to discuss this, yes, fine. But then in the next few years, a few months, we want to begin to see uh, the result in concrete terms. Yeah, indeed, the president himself just attended the G20 summit uh, and then we had um, uh, lots of good things uh, coming from that trip. Uh, 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 do you see this organization, and it, it, indeed it is the, the, the largest intergovernmental organization of developing countries uh, in the United Nations, do you see them towing the path of the BRICS with regards to seeking alternative world order, you know, trading in national currencies? You see, it, it, I think they are watching us carefully. They are watching Africa carefully. That's why our challenges because Africa is no longer, I said it's no, it's no longer uh, a place to think is the next frontier. No, Africa is where it's happening right now. And if you see most of the, uh, most of other nations like all these European countries and some of the uh, South American uh, states and countries, you begin to see that is getting saturated and you know africa has the the population the market not just uh, having the population we have the resources as well in terms of natural resources human resources name it so you have to look into africa right now and not just looking into it because they've been looking into it for the past uh, years so it's now to participate in it and i think most of the things they are looking into how can we participate gainfully 
because it's not going to be free anymore. Mm. And uh, we have to begin to decide with them. We have to begin to negotiate. We have to begin to dialogue. It's unlike before where you just come and dictate to us. So Africans have grown out of that uh, dictatorial era whereby you just come and tell us this is what you have and this is what we must take. They have seen it now that Africa is not a place you can just go and dictate. We have our choices. We can make our choices. And we can tell them this is what we want. I just want our leaders, African leaders, to come together and have a voice, a strong voice for that matter. And, you know, so that the, 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 the world will begin to respect us, you know, beyond uh, the colonial era, the colonial mentality. And this is what is going on right now. And I think... ...meetings all around Africa. So that because, um, you see, when Brits now begin to see that, look, let's bring in more African countries, it seems that they know it. Look at, if you look at the archipelagos, you will see that the Indians are there. They've been there for a long time, you know, because of the Indian Ocean that, you know, that goes across that area. Look at, when I say the archipelagos, I mean uh, Mauritius, Seychelles, you know, Madagascar, and even Maldives. You know, look at all those areas. You begin to see that, you know, the Indians are there. And I think most of other, most of all these uh, other nations are beginning to see that, look, Let's go there, because if we don't, we'll be losing out. And that is one of the reasons we have to be careful. Who do we give our resources to? How do we manage our resources? We need them. Yes, there's no doubt about that. But they need us as well. It is not just a free thing. There's no free meal. They know why they are coming to us. They know what they want from us. And we should be able to know and decide on how to deal with that issue. And this is where African Union, the leaders in the African Union, they have to come together and be very serious about this issue. It is not about just being selfish, about my country alone. It's about all of us. And you know, you begin to see the political arrangement as well. Take for instance, you have in, in, in East Africa, you have majority of uh, Indians and other nationalities that are calling themselves Africans. You know, even in Nigeria, you have the Indians. I have an Indian friend who is called Tolani, I mean, so we have to begin to see that. So if somebody comes to you, naturally, they say, Tolani, you expect a Yoruba man. But this is an Indian guy. And he said, look, I'm Tolani. So what do you want to do? If you allow Africans to go to America and become uh, African-American, Nigeria-American, you know, and they can take positions. Obama took a good position as a leader of America. So we have to prepare for all these things coming up in Africa. So Africa may not just be because of your color. It will be because of your brain. And this is, a, this is the possibility that is going to happen. And this is why people really want to come in. In a few years to come, you begin to see a Nigerian Chinese born. You begin to see, you know, uh, maybe uh, Nicaragua Nigerian born. <laughs> okay, well, Nigeria's debt has just jumped by 75%. Okay, I'm just trying to take you to uh, Nigeria's debt issue. Um, uh, we just saw a headline this morning on the Punch newspaper that uh, Nigeria's debt has jumped by 75% in three months and is hitting 87 trillion naira. Now, what, what, let's further look at this new scramble for Africa's resources. Definitely a, a phenomenon that won't go away anytime soon. No doubt, this new scramble is different from the old scramble of between 1881 to 1914. Um, but look, let's look at this new scramble and how um, it can impact on the development of the continent's economies. You see, we, we, we are borrowing, and uh, it's good to hear from the president and uh, his minister, uh, while he doing that, said, look, we're not just going to continue to bury, it's not going to be business as usual. You see, a developing country, not only because we're a developing country, uh, we our budget is on deficit. How do we maintain uh, all of that programs that we have? So definitely we have. We have to put our house in order. You know, so uh, when I say carelessly, in, in, in sense with all humility, in a sense that, you know, sometimes when contracts are being inflated, when there is corruption, when there is stealing of government funds, that is careless spending. And we are not doing, we are doing, you know, not doing much, let me put it that way, to control this. It's not even only in Nigeria, corruption is everywhere. But it's just that we are talking about Nigeria right now, and we are seeing that, you know, it's not what we expect 
And that is why the governor, uh, the government has said, the, the president said, look, we are not going to continue to borrow. We have to, but we have debts already. We have to service that. And mm. how can we be borrowing to service debt? It's, it doesn't make any uh, any sense at all. So I think we have to give them a chance because we have a lot at hand. This is not just about the last eight years. It has been there for years and it will take years again. We have to be thinking of how to balance our budget. We have to be thinking of how to balance our uh, trade. You know, so this is a big task, and that is why I'm saying it is not just to evaluate this within a year and expect miracle to happen. We have to, and taking the the budget uh, carefully, I think they are going to work on it. The next budget will give us an idea of how this government will be serious about servicing our debt. But then we still have to worry because we are on a deficit a budget, and until we begin to have uh, a kind of surplus whether in terms of uh, locally uh, made, uh, boosting our locally made goods, uh, boosting our manufacturing sector, boosting our agricultural sector, boosting our you know, health sector. So we need a lot. It's going to take some time, and I bet you it is not a month. It's going to take years. Definitely. And then the leaders of the continent need to do a lot to uh, reclaim our sovereignty. You alluded a yes. bit to that, but I think let's look at that very, very critically. The vice president is in Cuba right now. The Global South is making it clear that they want an open, more inclusive multilateral cooperation, something that is making the West uncomfortable, understandably. But how can African leaders reclaim the sovereignty of the continent? You see, basically right now, it's just with us. Nobody is coming now to conquer us if we are serious with what we are doing. If we have our own agenda, we follow it. And that is what I said, that African Union has not been uh, that vocal and had that been effective in so many ways, with all due respect to, to the leaders in the African Union. But you see now that, look at what William Ruto, the president of Kenya, is promoting. You will see the, the pragmatism in that. You will see the effort is putting into this. I mean, and it's, it's happening so well in East Africa right now that they are saying, look, you don't need a visa to come to my country. You can even trade with me in Chileans. That's my currency. So if we are unable to have our currency, I mean, that is African Union currency. We are unable to have our ECOWAS currency. We are unable to have all these things to standardize it. Look, if not for European Union, Apple, for instance, Apple has, you know, uh, a charger. That has to be only for Apple, you know, Apple iPhones and all these I, you know, devices. But European Union you know, stood up to them and said, no, you have to have a common thing for everybody. So that is why we are in African Union. You know, have they stood up to any of these multi uh, national or international organizations or companies or conglomerates to say, listen, this is Africa. You have to be different when you come to us. You have to treat us differently. And you know, we are not talking about balanced trade. The trade will never be balanced the way we are going. And I mean, one side we're having the best, and the other side is we're not having even the better one. So we have to look at all those things carefully and critically as well. We have brilliant young men and women in the diaspora, and we have to tap into the diaspora knowledge, the diaspora economy. And these are the things we have to look into. African diaspora is so huge that we can develop this nation. We can. But it is well because the people don't have trust in their countries. They don't have trust in their nation. And that is what is happening. We have to build trust. Look at some of our websites, all these uh, foreign, uh, foreign affairs. The website does not even show some of the things we have. We have resources enough. We have human resources and natural resources. We have gold. We have whatever we need to make Africa great. But we are not doing it. And if we are doing it, some people are stealing it. And that is what is annoying. And nobody wants to work in a place whereby you can have a gain. We are not having a living wage. We are not having a minimum wage. So what do we have? And that is what the problem in Africa is all about. And that's why the people are happy with the government in most cases. So I believe this government, they've had enough. They've seen it now. And they should be able to do their bit and their best as well. And I think that's why I want to give the government, I want to give the president, uh, Bola Metinubo, the chance. And I want people, you know, to just, let's see how it will fare in the next few years, at least in the next two years, and let's begin to see. And if we see, for instance, look at our passport. We said we have the European, uh, you know, African passport. Your passport is not respected. Nigerian passport may not be respected in the neighboring countries. Look at how they treat us even at the border. So what are we saying? The European, you know, they've, 
they, they've come a long way and they was they are speaking in one voice. Look at even that man and woman that they took bribe from the Qatar uh, World Cup. Look at the way they were sanctioned. And look at what is going on, the investigation. Are we doing such a thing here? We are not. And that is the reality. We have to have a better diplomatic channel to handle some of these things. And we have to have an agenda for Africa and for Nigeria. Indeed. Thank you so much, Joe Femi Dagwara, for your time. I appreciate that. Joe Femi Daguru, public policy analyst, has been my guest on the second hot topic. And that's the much we have for you today and indeed the week. Thanks for being a part of the show. Before we leave, um, okay, I have the quote of the day for you. Through the dark and stormy night, faith beholds a feeble light up the blackness stricken. Knowing God's own time is the best, is a patient hope I rest for the full day. Okay, that's uh, John Greenleaf with you there. Uh, a lovely long quote. I hope you got it. All right, I am Maureen Menon Wezigui, and on behalf of the entire team, I say thank you again for being a part of the show. Do enjoy the rest of your day. <laughs>